You heard about today with the illegal alien coming in, very sadly, from Mexico. And you saw what happened to that incredible, beautiful young woman. Should have never happened. Illegally in our country. We've had a huge impact, but the laws are so bad. The immigration laws are such a disgrace. We're getting them changed. Well, tonight, Agnes Gibney, who lost her son to an illegal immigrant, is here to share her unique perspective on this heartbreaking case. And retired lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, Randy Sutton, offers us a law enforcement perspective. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Agnes, what was your thought when you heard this case today and uh, what police were summing up for us this afternoon? Heartbroken. My heart goes out to the family. And uh, this is an outrage, uh, a preventable crime that should have never happened. If the politicians would secure our borders and start deporting illegal aliens, maybe Molly would still be alive today. This is unacceptable, unacceptable. And, and so people know more about your story, Agnes. You were a legal immigrant here yourself, but your son was later killed uh, years ago by an illegal immigrant gang member. Uh, and this is something that you have made a very important cause uh, for years now. Absolutely. It's not about my son. It's not about the thousands uh, of uh, in, uh, American citizens that are killed by an illegal alien. This is about protecting our country. I always believe that this country is protecting its citizens, and what a disappointment it has been to know that they are not. And so many people, so many families are heartbroken forever to follow in my path. And this should have never happened to my son and thousands of other uh, families in this country. We need to protect our own. Oh, okay, Randy, I want to bring you in here. I want to read part of the affidavit so people know exactly what the suspect has told police according to their sworn affidavit connected to his arrest warrant. It says he parked his vehicle, got out, and was running behind her and alongside of her. Rivera says she grabbed her phone and said, I'm going to call the police. Rivera said he then panicked and got mad and that he then, quote, blocked his, quote, memory which is what he does when he gets very upset and doesn't remember anything after that until he came to an intersection. Rivera states he then made a U-turn, drove back to an entrance to a field, and then drove into a driveway to a cornfield. He, there, he noticed there was an earpiece from headphones in his lap, and that's how he realized he'd put her in the trunk. Randy, what do you do with this case? That's nonsense, of course. Um, he... Uh... He gave, he gave a little bit of information to the police, enough to, uh, uh, to bring them to the conclusion that he had killed her, and, uh, and then led them to where the body was, but conveniently um, blacked out uh, before the assault and didn't remember anything. I, that, that's nonsense, and I'm sure that they'll, uh, they'll discover that uh, he remembers everything. Well, um, this, this tragic story, though, what it what it really does reveal is the amazing police work that was done to bring this this case to a conclusion though yeah i mean they talked about having surveillance tapes and spotting his car uh and that they he may have seen her before um and also i have to wonder randy will they go look at other cases because it's hard to believe although it could happen that this would be the first time um that you would engage in this kind of behavior and we'd wind up with uh somebody who's been murdered do you think that police will now spread a wider net to look at other cases in the area Oh, absolutely. There, were, there will be. Uh, the, the, remember, the, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is already involved in this case, and uh, they keep a, a tremendous database of all unsolved crimes. So they will look at the MO that this uh, uh, this suspect did. They will compare it to other unsolved homicides and determine if this was his first uh, his first major crime, or if there were other abductions. Other uh, I, there. My guess is when they when they dis, when they do the autopsy, uh, they're gonna they're gonna find that uh, there was uh, uh, other other crimes committed uh, to this poor woman, and um, I think that they they will be looking at unsolved sexual assaults as well. Okay, Agnes, uh, tonight a lot of folks saying that there's no way that this should be political. The president shouldn't be talking about it at his rally. We shouldn't be talking about walls. There are some reports we've been trying to confirm information that there are allegations that this young man was working at a farm that was owned by someone who has deep GOP connections uh, there in Iowa. Is it dangerous to make this a partisan issue at this point? No, this is an issue, and we all need to make this a big issue. Look. 
we formed a, a group called Angel Families to bring to light these types of crimes because American people need to know this is not an isolated case. The, 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 uh, the, to circumvent the, the uh, biased uh, liberal media that's lying and not covering these stories, Molly is not the only one that has been killed. There are thousands of others. How many more are we going to sacrifice? This is not a political issue. We need to enforce immigration laws. We need to stop Start getting down and deporting these illegal aliens, starting with the criminals. There, there shouldn't be any any leeway for them. Why? How many more do we need to lose? How many families need to be destroyed, like mine and like thousands of others? How many? President Trump is on on the right track. We need to build a wall. We need to enforce immigration laws, and we need to deport criminal illegal aliens. And I don't care if this guy was a really good guy. Well, he obviously wasn't because he took a precious life. And Agnes, no one knows this pain better than you. No one can speak to it better than you. Um, Randy, on these issues of enforcement and whether ICE can get a detainer now uh, on this accused suspect and what happens from here, I mean, how difficult is it for local and state law enforcement uh, in trying to find this balance and working with the feds when you have a case like this where for now authorities are saying this guy's been here illegally for at least four to maybe seven years? Right. Well, the, ICE has already obtained a detainer. That's already been placed on him. And, and while this is not political in the sense that that uh, Democrats and Republicans uh, are, are at odds about about this particular crime. Um, the fact of the matter is that this is a public safety issue, as is as it has always been, but it has been politicized. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is that Congress, unfortunately, has has not done their job. The president is doing the very best he can with the tools that are there. This this insanity with this this hatred for ICE and what they do is is, is nothing short of madness. Protecting the people is what law enforcement does. ICE is 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 part of that of that apparatus. They they're, the men and women that that are that do that job are incredibly dedicated. And for them to be vilified by the media and by Democratic politicians who who seemingly don't care about innocent victims is something that I find absolutely abhorrent. Well, it's a conversation that will once again get heated up because, unfortunately, of this case. Um, Randy and Agnes, thank you both for sharing your perspectives. Good to have you with us. Thank, thank you, Shannon. Thank you. All right, coming up, President Trump visits coal country, a rowdy rally in West Virginia to celebrate his move to roll back Obama-era coal regulations and makes a big announcement about big plans for midterm campaigning. Chris Steyerwalt is here with political analysis. I'm going to be going out as many days as I can and I'm allowed to.